Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Today is my weekly recap, show you kind of what happened in the Arizona real estate market for the week, touch on uh, mortgage rates, some of our volume, what we're seeing out in the market and what kind of changes we expect coming up for the week. This week is going to be a very busy and volatile week in the mortgage market. We're already sitting at 6.90. That's higher than it was about two and a half weeks ago. It's certainly a lot higher than it was before the central bank did their 0 0.50 point basis cut. Everybody thought at that time, people that didn't really understand how mortgages work, that once they cut it, mortgage rates are going to come down. And we, we just aren't seeing that. The bond market has reacted differently. Some of that has to do with the mounting amount of debt that we have. And it's harder and harder to move the uh, T-bills that are out there to finance our debt. So there's competition. So rates are going up. Um, we can see how long that will last. But this week, you've got a JOLT report coming out, which is a jobs report. You've got um, CPI coming out, which is uh, inflation. Then you have our GDP coming out in the last quarter. So if all three of those are down, uh, down from forecast, you can expect interest rates to go down. So if unemployment is getting worse, if the economy is getting worse, CPI is getting better, in other words, a down number, and the GDP is coming down, I would expect the bond market to react to start pulling rates down in anticipation of the central bank lowering rates again. Now, if any of those kind of break even with what forecasters say they are, or they exceed their expectations, then uh, all bets are off the table. So it's going to be an interesting week, and that all starts on Tuesday. So we're going to be watching that closely for those of us who follow the market. Uh, there's an article here that says that the feds have gone quiet ahead of its November 7th meeting. In other words, there's not a lot of chatter, nothing really to talk about. Um, November 7th is when they decide they're probably going to cut 0.25 points. They may not. Nobody knows. They say they're going to look at the data and they're going to wait. Now, what we're seeing in our market is the Cromford Market Index is showing a lot more negativity in the market as far as the advantage for sellers in all of our cities except for four, which is Phoenix, Cave Creek, Tempe, and Peoria. And out of that negativity that we're seeing there, it's uh, interesting here in their analysis and their forecast where the Cromford Mark Market tries to go out and do a monthly forecast and they miss their mark and they usually don't. The actual result was so weak that it fell to lower 90% confidence level. The last five months have been extremely volatile for price per square foot, up nearly 5% one month and down 3% the next, partly because of lower closing numbers, smaller sample size, tends to create more volatility on the averages. The median sales prices have been much more stable since the high end of the market has little or no effect, no effect on medians. I'm seeing some pretty brisk activity in the high end. I'm going to tell you about it in a moment. But one of the things that they're saying here, and they end with price cuts are frequent and numerous. Bargains sell quicker than homes advertised at full market value. If that's where your home sits, that's kind of a well done moment for you. You're saying, I got it priced where the market is. Where are the buyers? Well, they're not interested this month. They want a value, they want a bargain, or they're not playing. And if they do decide to write you an offer, they're going to come in a lot lower than your market price. Even though you've gone through, you've looked at the comps, you say, I'm right there. Right now in this market, right there, unfortunately, doesn't cut it. And you can see that's why we're seeing more and more price cuts every week. People are saying, well, that didn't work. Got to cut the price. This is above a million dollars. Well, it was until I uh, hit that button. So I'm going to try it again here. Hopefully I didn't put in 10 million, but you can see this is the up and down on accepted uh, contracts. It's not bad. 120 this week. Um, that market is not bad. I was out over the weekend showing homes. The price range was 1.25 to 25, 1.5 to 2.5 million. And the one at 1.5 was listed one day, had seven showings the first day, beautiful area, in South Gilbert, gated community, um, seven, People came by, they had an offer in their hand on Saturday and lots of traffic went to a 2.5 just down the street, had an open house. The open house traffic was, I would describe it as extremely busy. While in the price range between four and 800,000 agents are sitting there twiddling their thumbs. There's not a lot going on because in the luxury market, they're not affected by the rise in rates. 
<clears throat> four to eight hundred, they are. And here's our active listings. Uh, I've predicted that they're going to come down and follow 2022 levels. Um, I don't have to be Nostradamus to do that, except to say our listings always go down at the closer we get to the holidays. And since we're following 2022 levels now, I don't see any reason why that will drift off that expectation. I am seeing new listings um, coming on this week have gone down by about 200. New contracts have gone down by about 100. So the gap's closing a little bit, uh, but the downward trend in new listings to me is already showing me the canary in the coal mine as far as total listings going down as we get closer to the holiday season. And the same with our sales per month. They're continuing to go down. And they're again, they're trending right where 2022 levels are. So we're above 23, below 22. Here's our average sales price per square foot. You can see it's been up and down and up and down. And that's going to be pretty volatile, I think, now into the next quarter. The big surprise that we saw was this. <clears throat> and this is, excuse me, parcel of land out here that was being sold between Joe Max and uh, Happy Valley Road out in the West Valley. And it started out at um, at forty nine million for that, and so we had Dr. Horton start the bids, and then they kind of stepped away. Other builders came in and uh, bid it up. At the time, Shea Holmes was the only builder for that auction, taking the property for the minimum bid of forty six point seven million dollars. But then it ratcheted up in a matter of minutes. The Lennar, Taylor, Morriston, Ashton Woods Group aggressively raised the bid by $1 million several times through the process, which requires only a minimum bid increase of $100,000. Builders are looking for land. And so D.R. Horton sat back, said, well, we're just going to wait this. At the end of the auction, towards the end, they finally raised their paddle, and they were the winners. They held out, and they said, okay, $64 million. So that's what's going on up there. And uh, we're seeing that all over the valley. This is an interesting read on Arizona takes major step towards regulating water, groundwater in the Wilcox area. Let me explain what's going on there. In the rural areas where the farming is, they have their own districts. In the city, we have the ADWR, which regulates our groundwater usage. In the outlying areas, in the rural areas, that's been done by separate districts that farmers have. They form their own districts. They're self-policing. There's been a battle going on in discussions for a few years now where the state has wanted to come in and take it over and say, well, we want to manage it manage it, because we've got some wells drying up out there. And, and the local districts are saying, we've got it. You don't need to manage it. And we're taking care of it. And they're, they're very frugal with their water use. Uh, but for reasons I don't know, and I don't know really how it's going to pan out, uh, they finally jumped in and said, nope, we're going to take it over. So that's going to be uh, interesting to see how far that expands. Are they going to end up down in Florence and Casa Grande, which is also on their radar? And that's just an organization that manages the groundwater. Now, I wanted to show you something, too, real quick, because we, we talk a lot in real estate about the MLS. Well, what is the MLS? It's the multiple listing service, and it's a service of uh, what we call clear cooperation. We put our data in. It has to be accurate, and it has to be, uh, once we take a listing, on the market within 24 hours. We can't take a listing and just kind of call it a pocket listing and hang on to it. That's being debated nationally. Things like national portals coming in. Like, let's just say that Zillow wanted to go out, and they're only going to show Zillow homes. Well, that's not going to be good for consumers. So the multiple listing service is the best thing for you because you are you get to see everything that's available, including coming soon because it's shared, shared cooperation. So we do that through our association. We pay to be in the association and we pay to have access to the multiple listing service. And it shows it like this. So I put your home on and then inside the listing, it says, Seller directs listing to be excluded from the internet. Well, that wouldn't be a smart move. You want your listing everywhere. So that's not checked. They direct the address to be excluded for the internet. You'll get the same result. Seller directs listing not to be used in AVMs. What that is, I check that off because I don't want people to, uh, and other computer programs to put in a value. 
you know, the old fly over 30,000 feet, give you a zestment. I don't want that done. I direct listing not to allow comments on the internet. I don't want people to be able to go into a website and go, this home stinks. Um, so I leave that off. IDX program sharing. IDX is an internet search program. And I check to put it there and broker listing distribution op options, realtor.com. So essentially, I am telling the multiple listing service to put this everywhere. And I mean by that, here's an address of one of our listings here. And I put the address in the search bar in Google. And it says here in about 20 seconds, it shows up at 3,900 locations. So where is your listing? Where are you advertising my listing? Everywhere. You can see it shows up absolutely everywhere because of IDX that I just showed you on the MLS. So you can see here at Zillow, Redfin, Long Realty, Remax, Sotheby's, Rocket Homes, Cobo Banker, Cobo Banker again, Century 21. It goes on and on and on. Zillow again, Redfin, Trulia, Homes.com. It shows up on every real estate website that's subscribed to the multiple listing service that uses IDX. So when somebody lists, lists your home and said, where's it advertised? You are already out there. Now we can do separate advertising on top of that. But to be honest with you, nothing's more powerful than what I showed you that within 20 seconds, you're on 6,900 websites. That's the power of the multiple listing service and clear cooperation. So I just want to share that with you as you're going through and looking at the possibility of listing your home. There are certain neighborhood groups like Nextdoor or Facebook Marketplace. Those are difficult, my friends, especially next door. You put the house up and then it just kind of ratchets down to where nobody sees it again after two days. And then you renew it and it goes down. But the only people who see it are the people that in that neighborhood that are already own in that neighborhood. So that doesn't work. Facebook Marketplace, people don't go to Facebook Marketplace to look for homes. They go to Zillow. They go to Redfin. They go to Realtor.com or they go to the Realtor's website. They have their own searches. Nine times out of 10, buyers call me. Rick, I want to send you a list of homes I want to see. Great. Send them to me. Let me get the information on it. I can go in the MLS and pull up more detail on it. I can pull up the tax records. I can pull up the history. You can see some of that on your own, but I have a little more detail. What you can't see on your own are some of the private remarks about the property that we don't put out publicly. A little bit about access or some of the things that the seller's offering that they are not, we are not allowed to put publicly like uh, seller compensation right now. We can't put that out there. So seller compensation to the buyer agent. So the multiple listing service is your greatest exposure when it comes to listing your home. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick, rickhelps.com. Take care.